Bjarne Kalimetova. I thank the representative of Serbia and I now give the floor to the representative of India. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We, we congratulate you and the members of the Bureau on assumption of the charge of the Second Committee. We associate with the statement delivered by Palestine on behalf of Group 77 and would like to make some additional points in our national capacity. Mr. Chair, we have embarked on the journey towards achievement of the Agenda 2030, adopted four years ago. We have crossed some of the initial milestones on the path charted for the implementation of the SDGs. India is on the right trajectory to achieve the SDGs and implement the 2030 Agenda. Our Prime Minister, during his address at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris in August 2019, said that the targets for climate change, which were set up in a COP21 to be achieved in 2030, India will achieve most of them well ahead of time. More than 140 member states, including my country, have presented our VNRs in the first four-year cycle. We will present our VNR for the second time at the high-level political forum in July 2020. Mr. Chair, we welcome the steps taken by Secretary General to reform the UN development system. One of the key elements of the reforms is the reinvigorated resident coordinator system. The objective of the new system is to strengthen accountability, transparency, and development of an effective UN system, which will become a driving force in achieving the 2030 Agenda. In that spirit, we made a voluntary contribution to the UN Special Purpose Trust Fund for the new resident coordinator system. Mr. Chair, the developmental vision endorsed by the international community under the SDGs has been mirrored in our country's national development plan. We have crystallized SDGs in our flagship programs launched in the last five years. India's efforts in implementing the 2030 Agenda will be an important contribution to our collective success. The world can count on India, and we also look forward to the support of the international community for assisting the endeavors of India and other developing countries. Under the National Mission on Financial Inclusion, a record number of over 370 million new bank accounts have been opened for the poor in the last five years. We have leveraged these bank accounts with the power of biometric identity system and mobile phones to deliver subsidies and services. This has helped us in saving more than US dollar 20 billion by checking corruption. Mr. Chair, the issue of water and sanitation is essential to achieving all the SDGs, particularly those on health, nutrition, sustainable cities, and gender equality. We have been able to successfully implement the world's biggest sanitation campaign within the Clean India Mission by building over 110 million toilets in just last five years. We have, lost, we have launched a mass campaign across the entire country to make India free of single-use plastic. In order to comprehensively address all water-related issues and provide tap water to all households by 2024, we have recently established a new Ministry for Water Conservation and Management. We have launched the Ayushman Bharat, a cashless health insurance scheme, which aims to cover more than 500 million beneficiaries and provide coverage of rupees 500,000 per family per year. Since the launch of the scheme in the last one year, more than 400 people, million people have been benefited. Mr. Chair, India envisions of becoming a leader in renewable energy and has introduced several new initiatives for clean and green energy. By 2022, India plans to produce 175 gigawatt of renew renewable energy that will include 100 gigawatts of solar power. Beyond that time frame, we are working towards achieving the target of 450 gigawatts of renewable energy. The International Solar Alliance, championed by India and France, is now joined by more than 79 nations and established within UN as a multilateral treaty. It is making ambitious strides for making tangible contribution to the global efforts on climate action. We have even installed solar panels on the roof of UN headquarters in New York. Mr. Chair, India remains committed to fully embracing the Sendai framework. Last month, we launched a Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure with a supporting secretariat based in Delhi. The coalition will act as a mechanism to assist countries to upgrade their capacities and practices with regard to infrastructure development. It will address the loss reduction targets under the Sendai framework, enable implementing of a number of SDGs and also will contribute to climate change adaptation. India has taken several steps to implement the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. We organized the COP14 of the UNCCD from 2nd to 13 September in New Delhi, which saw adoption of an ambitious Delhi Declaration. At the conference, 
we decided to increase the total area that would be restored from its land degradation status from the earlier target of 21 million hectares to 26 million hectares between now and 2030. Mr. Chair, research and innovation would be the driving force for the Industrial Revolution. India has introduced flagship programs such as Startup India and Digital India. Today, India is the world's third largest startup nation. We have cheapest rates of data service in the world. In just last three years, the online instant payment transactions have grown from mere 100,000 to 920 million, amounting to rupees 1.2 trillion in August 2019. Mr. Chair, the BAPA Plus 40 conference that took place in Buenos Aires in March 2019 resulted in adoption of an ambitious outcome document on South-South cooperation and its role in implementation of the 2030 agenda. Now, the challenge is to translate those principles into concrete action. Here at the UN, in 2017, India established the India-UN Development Partnership Fund to work with fellow developing countries in the spirit of South-South cooperation by providing support to projects that aim to contribute the achievement of SCGs. A sum of US dollar 150 million has been committed for the next decade, focusing on development projects in LDC, LLDC and SIDS. In just about two years, the fund has been able to develop 38 projects in 36 partnering countries. 29 projects are already under initiation and implementation, implementation stage with many near completion. Mr. Chair, we wish you all the success in all your endeavors. You can count on the unstinted support of my delegation for the successful conduct of work of this committee in these weeks ahead. I thank you. I thank the representative of India.